Okay, some help with uh, ionisation energies. Uh, the first thing we need to have a look at is first ionisation energies. So the definition for first ionisation is the enthalpy change required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of a gaseous atom to form one mole of unipositive gaseous ions. Normally we write it's the enthalpy change for X in a gaseous form going to X plus in a gaseous form plus E minus. In a question, you would need to find out which element you were dealing with so you could actually put the element in. If we're then having a look at successive ionisation energies, we would take an electron off at a time. So for the second ionisation energy, you would start with a 1 plus ion, take one electron off and form a 2 plus ion. And for third ionisation energy, you start with a 2 plus ion, go to a 3 plus ion by taking an electron off, etc. So just check in the question which ionisation energy you are dealing with. If we've placed these data in a table, we have successive ionisation energy chart. You can work out which group the element belongs to. To do this, you will need to work out the difference between the successive ionisation energies. When there is a large jump count, the number of electrons removed before this step. This is the group that the element belongs to, an oversimplified example I'm showing you next. Let's say we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 successive ionisation energies and the values put underneath. These aren't actual values, it's just ones for illustration. So first value is 10, then 20, then 35, then 100, then 125, 140 and 160. If you get out a calculator or work out in your head the difference between them, so the difference between 10 and 20 is obviously 10, between 20 and 35 is 15 and so on. We have a look at the values of the difference. You notice it goes 10, 15, 65, 25, 15, 20. So you'll notice the 65 is the greatest jump. So we have a count how many electrons we've taken up before this step. So in this case, we've taken off 1, 2, 3. So this indicates that this element is going to be in period 3. Sorry, group 3. This can also be shown on graphs, so if you get used to working it out from graphs as well. The enthalpy change for first ionisation energy, as we said before, can be defined as one mole of electrons removed from one mole of gaseous uh, atoms to form one mole of unipositive ions. It's really important in these to put the state symbols. If we look at just the first ionisation energies across period 3, we have a well-known graph which you will need to be able to answer questions on. The graph looks like this form. Uh, this one is for period three. They get a similar shape for period two. Anyway, to learn this one, I have a silly little way of remembering it. So I remember it by saying you do do, which basically stands for you start off with sodium at the bottom, then you go up, down, up, up, down, up, up. So you do do. It's one way of remembering the shape because sometimes you get questions where they put some of the crosses on and you've got to put in the values for the un specified ones. You need to be able to describe three main points from this graph, so I've labelled them 1, 2 and 3. The first one is that there is a general increase in first ionisation energies as you go across a period. This can be explained by the fact that the nuclear charge increases. So if we just look at sodium to argon, underneath this I put the number of protons, so sodium's got 11 protons and argon's got 18 protons. This means that the outermost electrons are more strongly attracted by the positive protons in argon. We also note that the atomic radius decreases across period 3. So again, the outer electron is more strongly attracted to the protons in the nucleus. As it's period 3, the shielding remains the same. So all of them will have an electronic configuration with shielding electrons 1s2, 2s2. Then the next thing we need to have a look at is the decrease between magnesium and aluminium because aluminium has a value that's lower than would be expected by the trend. This can be explained if you write out the electronic configuration of the two elements. So for magnesium we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. For aluminium we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. So we'll be comparing removing a 3s electron in magnesium and a 3p electron in aluminium. The electron in the 3p orbital will have more energy than the electron in the 3s, so it's easier to remove the outer electron in aluminium. 
Remember, in these cases, the shielding is the same. So, despite an increase in nuclear charge, the first ionization um, energy for aluminium is less than the first ionization energy for magnesium. This is due to the difference in energy of the electrons between the subshells. This decrease is seen between the S block and the P block elements for all the other periods. The third thing you need to have a look at is there is a decrease between phosphorus and sulphur. Again, if we write out the electronic configuration to compare them. So for phosphorus it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. And sulphur it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. So in phosphorus there are three electrons of 3p and there are three available orbitals. This means that each electron can occupy a separate 3p orbital. So for example 3px1, 3py1, 3pz1. However, when we have a look for uh, sulphur, there are four 3p electrons and there are only three 3p orbitals. So that one orbital must have electrons that have a 2 in them. So for example, 3px1, 3py1, 3pz2. Obviously the two electrons could be in the xy or the z. Because electrons are negatively charged and are sharing the same orbital, they will repel, and they will repel with sufficient, um, the repulsion would be sufficient to reduce the first ionization energy, so therefore it requires less energy to remove it. Again, similar decreases are seen in the other periods. The next most common question is to do with successive ionization energies. This is where you take a one atom and remove an electron at a time and compare the EIE values. If we have a look at the example for oxygen, the electronic configuration for oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. We can remove all eight electrons one at a time. For the first electron to be removed, it will be removed from a 2p4, as, it, as will the next three that we remove. Then we will be removing electrons from lower energy orbitals, the 2s. So this is a different subshell, still within the second main shell. Once both 2s electrons are removed, we will remove electrons from the 1s shell. So that's going down to a different main shell. Obviously that's a different uh, 1s compared to 2s. Let's have a look at the sketch that we would find. So along the bottom we'll put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which are the successive ionisation energies for oxygen. So I've got the ionisation energies at the y scale. Initially, we'll have a least amount of energy required to remove the 2p electrons. Again, we've got four 2p electrons, so you'll notice it will increase as you remove electrons up to the fourth one. Then you'll have a small jump between the fact that you've got an s and a p subshell. So the next electron to remove will be a 2s, and then there'll be two of those, and then you'll get a large jump between the main shells. So if you have a look at successive ionization energy graphs, if you're looking for the large jump, that indicates that you've got a main shell. And if you look for a small jump in ionization energy, that usually indicates a jump between subshells. So in this case, you can see how many electrons you need to remove before you get to the main subshell. Sorry, the main shell. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So the six electrons removed before you get a large jump in ionization energy. This will tell you that the group there that, uh, in this case, oxygen's in is 6. You also know that you can see that there is a, a general trend increase between 1 and 6. Then there's the large jump, and then you've got between 7 and 8. So you can see there that you're actually using two shells in total. So for oxygen, it uses the first main shell and the second main shell. So there's a couple of questions then, obviously, they can ask about these graphs. It would be worth practicing some sketches for something like sulfur etc so you can explain the successive ionization energies